support for the Five Six Kings podcast isn't brought to you by anybody, but it could be brought to you by Subway. Subway Sandwich Shop. Right now, buy one foot long, get one 50% off. Subway, please give us some money. Think about it, Subway. You could get in on the ground floor of the Five Six Kings podcast. Think of all the bad press you got with Jared Vogel. Now you got Deion Sanders being cool and shit. Join the Five Six Kings. Give us some money. We'll promote the shit out of you. Subway. Eat fresh. And we are live with the first episode of the Five Six Kings podcast. My name is David Breen. I'm here with Braden Bowler. Braden, how are you, man? Oh, I'm doing pretty well, David. How are you doing? Doing well, man. This is, dude. This is years in the making. This is. Yeah, this is um ever since Kid Crashers, which one day we will bring you all up to speed on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time coming. I mean, we've been talking about YouTube literally since YouTube <laughs> was invented. And, uh, God, how the internet was different back in the day. But we are doing and starting up the Five Six Kings podcast, and we are excited. Yeah, so we're kind of, no real format to it. We're kind of just, every episode there's going to be some sort of topic. Um, We'll kind of go from there. If you're listening, if you're a fan, subscribe to our channel and, uh, you know, give us some feedback. Let us know what you want to hear. I won't care what you tell us, but Braden might. I'm actually going to care a lot. I'm like super sensitive to. He's going to read all the comments. He's going to be really into the feedback. He's going to be like, he's going to be commenting back. So say like mean shit and Braden will comment back and like get in an argument with you. I don't know. I'm a little too sensitive for that. If you guys want me to stay on the, on the show, I wouldn't get too mean. Okay. All right. If you don't want to hear me cry, but, um, or, you know, like the money might not be that good out in Colorado and I can go grab Corbin and we can just <laughs> run it with him. <laughs> Um, business is booming. Um, so what we wanted to get into today was this exciting fight card, uh, UFC 262 starring Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler and Tony Ferguson and Dairush. I don't know if I said that right, but two very exciting fights. And I just think it's going to set up so many other things for that weight class, uh, for Charles Oliveira, Michael Chandler, all the things that are going to happen between uh, Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier and everyone else in that division. I think it's like pretty exciting times right now. Well, it's I mean, it's huge for the division, especially, I mean, just looking at the co-main event even. Because Tony Ferguson wins, he's right back in the mix. I, I can't think of anyone who had a sadder 2020 in the UFC. And don't hit me with like, oh, what about this guy's, his kid's bones don't work. And like, that's way sadder than losing a couple fights. Like, Tony Ferguson had won 12 straight fights, was on a seven-year winning streak, and just got massacred by Justin Gaethje. And then got I mean, dominated by Oliveira in his last fight. And I think a win here, and he's kind of back in the mix. He's still a couple wins away. But yeah. I think we get Tony right back in the top. And I don't know, I kind of don't like how even the shit that I hear from Dana White and some of these other people, whether it's the press or just like people in the UFC talking about how Tony, like whether he's going to show up, like what what side of Tony is going to show up. I mean, it's like this dude's been fucking fighting for how long? And just because he has two bad fights, it's like which Tony? I I mean, I think he still brought the dog out of him, you know, and I I think like his whole heart and everything was out there. I just don't think the fights kind of went his way, and I think they're kind of over-promoting it as to, like, which Tony's going to show up. I just think he's just had a couple bad fights. But that's kind of Dana's job, because we're either, we're either making a star out of Dariush here, or it's, oh, my God, Tony Ferguson's back, ladies and gentlemen. Like, he, we thought he fell off the cliff. We thought he was gone. Now he's back. He's back in the mix. And, I, you know, I totally agree with that, but that, to me, st- stuck out in my head. Like, I almost felt like it was, like, a, like almost like a, I think that Dana would resort to almost like as a gimmick to try and sell it. 
And I mean, not that it seemed disingenuous or anything. I just felt like it, it is something that Dana would say. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like Tony's, I feel like, I feel like this fight's going to go for me. I think, um, in kind of like two ways. I think Tony, uh, is either going to get teed off on very, very quickly. in um, like, I think it's either going to end with Tony getting beat very quickly or I think if this thing, you know, drags on, I think Tony will probably take him to deep water in the later rounds. So I mean, I just after watching the Justin Gaethje fight, I like I fucking hope if, <laughs> if Tony loses, it's quick. It's like a quick submission because like the Gaethje fight was one of the most terrifying fights I've ever watched. Like his head was just shaking after every hit, like. It was crazy watching. Yeah, but that's him. how I feel after I take pre workout. I mean, I feel like that was just him, just like he probably does that like twenty times a fucking day, knowing that dude. And he's fucking. He probably works out so hard and does so many. No, no. I mean, he was probably feeling crazy. For those of you new listeners, and that's the first <laughs> podcast, so it's, you got to be a new listener. That was just Braden <laughs> letting you know that he works out. He's in very good shape. If you want to follow I'm, his ins, what's your Instagram? Uh, it's <clears throat> Braden Chad Bullard. <clears throat> All one word. Yeah. If you want if you want to go check that out, he's in fantastic shape. Good looking dude. Check him out. Braden Chad Bullard on Instagram. Thanks. David. Um Yeah, I, I agree though. I think it's kind of blown out of proportion because look at who it was Justin Gaethje who then fought Khabib. It was Charles Oliveira who's now fighting for the belt. Like it's not like he's losing. Like so if Dariush beats the shit out of him, you can say, All right, Tony Ferguson he, he might be done. But it's yeah. two killers. It's two. I don't think. Title he, I don't think he would. I bet you know. Even if the UFC was like, okay, that's enough for for Tony after I don't know. Like, let's say if he was to lose or something. I I mean, I I would feel like Tony would probably keep fighting for like another. He pro. I, I think he might be probably one of the longest running fighters to ever fight. Like career wise, he'll probably have like one of the longest careers. So I'm not saying like his. He's a done fighting UFC should cut him. I'm saying like he turns into like a Donald Cerrone who you know it's going to be a fun fight. You know he's going to go out there and give it his all. But, you know, like Donald Cerrone's days of challenging for titles are over. Now, do you think it like Tony has hit a cap where now he is part of like another um, generation where these new generation kind of fighters um, where, where he's not. I don't know how to how to say it. like the the skill set like almost like he's reached a cap, you know. Um, or or do you think that it, it's something with you know just being so long in his career, being too long in his career, or something like maybe just getting older? Um, or do you think it's just the the talent is that good up and coming? So I, so I think this fight will tell that, I, or it, or it won't. Or it'll be like a fucking Chris Weidman, Uriah Hall thing, and we won't learn anything out of it. Because like I said, the two people Tony lost to are killers. They challenged for the belt. Yeah, like if that's Tony, I, Tony yeah. wins here, he's a win or two away from challenging for the belt again. That's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, I think the, the last two dudes he fought were both probably in their prime as well. And I think that's like probably one of the biggest... Com- I, I feel like if Tony fought the majority of... Uh, uh, the majority of the other fighters in his weight class, you know, he probably would have done even better against the majority of the other people than than probably, you know, than he did against Gaethje or uh, Oliveira. I just feel like they were well, it was, both it was, in their primes when they fought Tony. It was two guys who, that was the best performance we've ever seen from them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, it's... It's just plain and simple. Like, that was the best fight we've ever seen Gaethje have. That was the best fight we've ever seen Oliveira have. So let's see what he does against Dariush. Yeah. Now, um, Tony I'm, wins. I'm personally, I'm, I'm pers- I think he'll win. I, I'm i a Tony Ferguson fan. I want to believe he's back. I want to believe yeah. that he's going to. Yeah. I want to believe Khabib's going to come out of retirement one day. That's exactly what Tony I'm Ferguson's going to beat him. We finally get that fucking fight because they've scheduled it six times or whatever it is, and it just gets canceled for some reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see. I hope we get it one day. If Tony wins, I I guarantee after he wins, he's gonna say something probably about Khabib. I don't. I mean, I don't know why that would be his main mission. I, I just I feel like he, you know, I, whenever you listen to him in interviews, everyone always brings up something about him and Khabib. And 
it's such a money making fight as well. You know, like I mean, I guess you could say like him trying to like call out Connor, but there's not as much hype or traction for it. Well, so he McNuggets. He's the one every whenever he wins a fight, you he says, right. "Hey McNuggets." You are like. right. You are right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are right. Um, which is funny too, because you don't. I mean, unless unless I'm out of the loop a little bit, you don't really hear as much uh, from Connor towards Tony. You know, I mean, I feel like there's certain people that Connor is kind of left out of the loop when it comes to certain people in his division. Uh, well, he's, like, Tony can strike with Connor. No, that's what I'm that, saying. That's like, the interesting thing. Like, Tony can strike with Connor. His wrestling, his ground game's better than Connor. Like, Tony's a fucking problem, especially for someone like Connor. Connor, his thing with Khabib was that's the biggest fight. He's the champion. Sure, he'll take me down, but if I can do enough damage on the feet, he won a round against Khabib. Yeah. Like, that was. No one else has ever done that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and like, that's what I have to think Connor's mindset is like, all right, Tony Ferguson, the average fan doesn't know who the fuck Tony Ferguson is. People who watch a lot of fights know who he is and they're excited about him. But like, why call out Tony Ferguson when that's a tough fight? I can lose that fight. Yeah. I'd rather fight Habib. I'd rather fight Dustin Poirier, who I fucking love Dustin. He has a big win for him. But uh, just Tony's not a big enough name to where Connor's going to say it. So then what do you think happens then if, 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 yeah, I know we're getting pretty hung up on Tony right now. But what what do you think? Who do you think he fights next if he does win? kind of plays out i could see maybe if dustin loses to connor we get dustin versus tony because dustin beats connor he's fighting for the belt if connor wins he's who the hell knows what connor's doing yeah i'd like to think he wants to fight for the belt but he might just be like give me masvidal give me give me nate diaz again yeah let me fight usman yeah you know and, and i I mean, whoever wins between McGregor and, and Poirier is obviously going to be fighting for the belt next. Justin I, Gaethje. Man, that's a crazy... He hasn't fought since Habib. And that's just because, like... But are they going to give him a title match? You know, like, maybe he... Go, but then what, are they going to put him up against Tony again? Unless Tony wants that. Unless Tony wants to, like, right a wrong or something like that. I don't want to see that fight again. I don't really unless, want to unless either. Unless Gaethje is, the, unless one of them are the champion and the other one has made it to the and, point. Where and they're if they're going to do that, they, Tony would have to win by such, you know, overly win to such a, a degree that they're like, okay, maybe now he does stack up well against Ju- like Justin for some reason. Like unless he just puts on a master box and striking class or some shit. I can't see it happening, really. Honestly, I mean, Justin just won too bad. But I just don't know where where Tony would would end up. Um, you know, if he won, uh, and I and I think that obviously plays out depending, you know, who wins what after that as well. There's so much happening in that division in that weight class. Um, super exciting, you know, which uh, which I guess brings us to Charles and and Michael Chandler. Ah, man, I'm so fucking hyped to see this fight i think there's i think they clash i think their styles clash so much and man i just think michael is gonna come in with with so much energy and i think he's gonna be pushing it so hard that that the way i see it is i think michael is gonna try and knock charles Oliveira out you know, and obviously he's going to have more luck uh, in the in the early rounds. I think the longer that this fight drags out, I think Oliveira has a better chance of winning, submitting him. Um, but I just think Chandler is going to close the distance and I think bring a crazy amount of pressure, especially in the early rounds. I, I, I think as well, it, it kind of depends which round uh, for, for who I think is going to end up winning. Dude, I remember sitting in the office at work when I got a notification from Bleacher Report on my phone that Michael Chandler signed with the UFC. I've never been so excited to get a notification from Bleacher Report before. (laughs) I fucking love Michael Chandler. So there's only been two fighters I've been real excited about when they came over to the UFC. Michael Chandler and Ben Askren. (laughs) Ben Askren mightily disappointed me. Um, Michael Chandler, his first performance, 
knocking out Dan Hooker the way he did justified my excitement. And if you go rewatch that fight, it's almost like you could see it coming. You oh, could, like, he set it up the whole. F- it was exactly beautiful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He is so fucking good. Uh, first of all, prediction: Chandler third round TKO. Third round. Third round TKO. Yeah. Um, Tony Ferguson's gonna win decision. Uh, but dude, like Chandler and he, I, I just get excited. Like Oliveira is gonna spoil the UFC for me if he wins. Because there is no title fight. Like, obviously, I'll be excited when they get announced, all of that shit, blah, blah, blah. Like, looking at it now, there is no fight I would be excited about him having defending the belt. Michael Chandler, Justin Gaethje, pumped. Habib, maybe coming out of retirement, probably not, because his dad died, and he said, I can't put my mom through that, so maybe... Maybe his mom will die, and then he'll be like, "All right, you know, I was fighting just, again." I was just, I was just thinking that literally yesterday, David. I was literally thinking last night. I said, "You know what? Actually, might happen. What might be the craziest story of all time? It is, which sounds really fucked up, and I don't really mean it exactly like this, but both of his parents passing away, and then him just being like, well, there's no reason to not go in." back into war you know like <laughs> just just fucking like say some crazy shit that we've never heard before like some fucking old fucking saying from russia or some shit and it just means like it's fucking war time now like i would lose my shit if you fucking make some crazy short statement about him just fucking coming back to fuck up everyone in the division i, I would lose my mind i just think it'd probably be one of the hypest moments probably in sports fucking entertainment yeah and dude him and Chandler, I'd be stoked about. Oh yeah, Michael Chandler and Connor, Michael Chandler and Gaethje. Well, I, I said too. Michael I mean, Chandler, Tony Ferguson. Like what a sh- what a striking match that would be. Like Connor versus Chandler. Oh Chandler, Chandler wouldn't strike with him. You don't think so? Chandler, you think he would just Chandler would take him down immediately? You don't think he would even want to though? Connor, people fucking forget how quick like, Connor is, cause, and it's because Poirier is great boxer. Yeah, Nate Diaz, great boxer. Yeah. Habib Connor wasn't ready for an overhand right. He was so focused on Poirier. so focused on blocking the takedowns. Yeah, yeah. Dude, Connor's striking is so fucking good. Yeah. I I love Chandler. He can't strike with Connor. I think he's smart enough to probably know that. And I think yeah. he just ragdolls Connor for a while. Yeah, and and I completely agree. I mean, if you look at some of the the styles of, you know, who Connor has knocked out, I mean a lot of these people they they almost like they're not as men, there's not they're not as much as counter strikers they kind of pressure in you know and then they lean too much with their weight in in and then they get caught by Connor and 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 another thing is Poye and and Diaz they're I mean they're like pretty big for their division and they could probably take I would say uh like a heavier punch from someone in their division than than maybe some of the oh dude Connor teed off on both of them. No, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Go, like the Poirier fight, it's Connor's exactly landing point. so much on him. And yeah, Poirier's exactly. just standing in there and taking it. So I'm like, much oh, more shit. So much more durable, and you could just tell by by their their stature, their body stature compared to the rest of the people in their division. I mean, they 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 walk around heavier, you know, in between fights than I would say Diaz and yeah. Poirier. Well, does. and so and so the Nate fights were at one seventy two. So yeah. Nate was probably like one eighty five. I was gonna say he's probably like one hundred eighty five. Like, like he he was a Big dude during the fight. Yeah. Uh, and same with Poirier. Poirier's a big dude. Yeah. Poirier could probably move up to 170. I've heard him talk about it, too. And he was just talking about how he sits around, I think he said, like, 175, 180, maybe. Um, you know, when he's going to get ready for, like, 155. But, you know, he was talking about other people. They're walking around almost, like, 200 pounds when they're getting ready for that 170. So, he said, you know, he was kind of thinking about it, depending on what happens between him and McGregor, um, from what I remember hearing from him. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just think. Well, I mean, I I think if he finishes McGregor again, he goes for, oh, he goes for, he the, goes for the lightweight title. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't move up to 170. Because yeah, Us- Usman, I, I don't see anyone in the UFC that's going to beat Usman anytime soon. And I don't think he's going to give. Colby a, a shot. I think he wants Colby to fight again, and and it's like, why? Well, why is he going to be the you know jump back in the ring as well when he is? And, and that's kind of like like the people at one seventy. Like no one else is. To my knowledge, I could be wrong. You could uh-huh. be like, I fucking saw this online. They'd be like, okay, I'm wrong. Um, but like, I, has anyone else called out Usman in the division? Or are they all just kind of like, yeah, let Colby do it? Because Colby, 
Colby lost to Usman and then just beat Woodley. And, like, yeah. Tyron Woodley is an all-time great, but it's not like Woodley was starching people before that fight. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I think I remember Dia saying something about he him thinking, like, Usman and, you know, some of these other fighters, I guess, besides Masvidal, are, are boring. And that is, like, a, I guess a reason why he isn't calling out Usman. Um I didn't really understand that, but I'm like, I don't know. Also, I mean, Nate can't fight for a belt right now. He's got, I mean, dude, I'm, I am so upset that that fight is not on this card, yeah. by the way. Uh, I'm excited for it. Nate, Leon Edwards, I believe it's going to be the next pay-per-view. Yeah, I think it's uh, the 12th, June 12th. Is that the Is that the next one? Is that not... Adesanya Vittori? Yeah, yeah. It's on that yeah, card? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that'll be a great card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, We'll talk about that. On like June eighth, guys. So, <laughs> yeah. so tune, tune back into the five six kings for that one. Um, but that's a fun fucking fight, him and Edwards, because that's Edwards is one of those boring fighters that Nate yeah. was talking about, and like, yeah, maybe Nate beats him. I I think Leon Edwards wins, and I think Leon Edwards should get the next shot at Usman. Yeah, we'll see what that. I honestly into, think but. Diaz is gonna get fucking you know hurt i think he's gonna overly put his durability to the test which is just not longevity and i i don't know i you know i feel like we're gonna almost see like a tony ferguson versus justin gagey kind of outcome between edwards and diaz i mean maybe i'm wrong and hopefully i i don't know hopefully i am but man i i just don't see how unless diaz is just making it like awkward or something i just Edwards just sees, seems so sharp and so precise and, like, knows, I feel like, how to set up things. But Diaz has always been kind of awkward to people like that. So, yeah. And it being a three-round fight is less exciting. They were planning on it. it five. Being, so, like, I saw it on the on the thing. It switched to three. And then they took it off the card. And now it's in the middle of it. And I think it's still a three-round. I hope huh. I'm wrong. If it's five rounds, I might change my opinion on this. Um... But because have we seen I mean, Edwards test get his cardio tested? I mean, we know Diaz has you know great cardio. I mean, I'm I'm sure we have, but we haven't seen Leon Edwards fight in the last year up until yeah, yeah, until exactly. You know, and I think that's probably the, I think that's probably the biggest deciding factor of this fight is Edwards' cardio and whether or not he that cardio is going to be able to outlast Diaz's durability. I think that's the main the main test to, to this fight. Cause if you think about it, like Diaz wins because of his durability all the time, man. I mean, people just can't keep up with their output compared to the damage that they're actually doing to Diaz. And it just ends up showing in the later rounds. And Diaz just has this relentless energy behind him and, and uh, you know, durability where he just, he seems unfazed and I, you know, him talking shit and being unfazed to people's combos and just fucking landed strikes makes the other fighter fighters uh, just less confident. And then that ends up just breaking them down. Like it's like a mental breakdown as well as a physical breakdown over these rounds because of his durability and because of his yeah, fucking personality. Yeah. <laughs> Googling it, it looks like it's five rounds. Five rounds? Looks like I, I don't know why I oh, thought man, it changed. Dude. But uh So once again So I'm, we'll and when this next pay per view. So we'll like we'll, we'll dive into it more then. True. But uh once again what? Well I was gonna say once again my my prediction of how these fights go is is kinda more is depending on the round. I think if Edward I think Edwards has a good chance in the first two to three rounds, but if it gets, you know, halfway through that third round and Diaz is still pretty good. I don't know, man. I don't know if, if Edwards is going to have the cardio to keep up with his durability. So I think Diaz got it in the later rounds, but Edwards in the beginning. Well, see, and that's what sucked about the the BMF fight. Yeah. Is that... They should have kept it going, I, th I think, a little bit longer. Well, so then, like, it's... Nate Diaz's eye looks like that every single time he exactly, fights. Exactly. It's not like that was a new thing, but it was in yep. New York and the athletic committee. They didn't want MMA to begin with. And they're like, oh, my God, is he bleeding out of his eye? We can't have him fighting out there. But I Nate was turning that fight around, and it's so, so 
round one was probably 10-8. Uh, like, they should I, totally I think, redo that I think fight. Nate needed the fi- They will. I th- well, I think if Nate loses, I think that's his next fight. I think it's him versus Masvidal. And I think that's the best thing Masvidal could do right now in his situation as well. That's a, that's his, probably his biggest fight. Nate has it so made no matter what. If he beats Leon Edwards, he's for sure fighting for the belt. Yeah. Because he's the biggest name in the division. Yeah. He's never fought Usman. That's for sure. That, but if he loses, he's got Masvidal and he's got Connor, and then he can retire. Yeah, he can retire with more money than most fighters get in their career. Yeah, which good for him. Yeah, good for him. Uh, do you want to talk? Do you want to talk about his brother? Yeah, I was gonna. I was actually about to bring up his brother. Like, what? What do you think happens with his brother? Do you, you know, like I, I was listening to Dana White. And he was unsure as to whether, you know, he is... Is this the, sure. the, the Brett Akamoto interview? I th- yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Brett Akamoto. Yep. I know you're listening, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, and he was just unsure whether or not, you know, he's going to come back and whether he's really serious and just talks about, you know, all this new upcoming talent and how hungry all these fighters are. And, you know, when you've been around for so long, you had such a time off and you've, you know, been financially successful and everything like that. I mean, there's less of a drive... You know, once when you've done so much, and that's what I think Dana's questioning the most. Do you think Nick Diaz hears that and is just like, you know, fuck you, Dana? Like, you think I don't have the drive? You know, I'm gonna give me whoever you want because Dana talked about him versus Chimaev, which got me so excited the second I heard that. I was like, oh, that's yes, like yes, I, I need absolutely, I need that in my blood yeah. right now. Uh, well, I think Dana has a point. But for sure, but but not but not but I don't think it pertains as much to the Diaz brothers because they're just cut from a different fucking cloth, man. I mean, especially when you have brothers that are both like it's like that trickle effect, you know, just like the energy bounces off of one to another, you know, like they're probably around each other all the time. And they're, you know, especially his younger brothers still in it and his older brothers. I mean, they probably train every day as well. Still doing all this stuff. He probably knows exactly what he's capable of. Still probably trains with the best of the best. And, you know, I wouldn't I, I don't I don't think that, you know, what Dana's saying is true. I think he's kind of putting that out there to test Nate to see if if he's really, you know, Nate confident about it. Huh? Nate or Nick? Nate or Nick. I mean, my bad. Um, yeah, yeah, Nick, the older okay, brother. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think I think he's saying that to kind of test them so that when they go and talk now, you know, it's like motivation to get to get Nick to, you know, come back even more if he is going to come back instead of kind of just like wishy wash and thinking it. Um, I don't really think Dana fully thinks that. I think he knows that, you know, I mean, regardless if he's well off financially or whatever, Nick's a fucking dog and, and, you know, he's around dogs all the time and that doesn't just go away just because of a, of a little bit of financial success or, or, you know, what he's done in his past, which just proves, you know, to what he still is capable of doing, if anything. So here's what I want to happen. If Leon Edwards beats Nate Diaz, or if he doesn't, Nate Diaz's next fight is yeah. a main event either for the BMF <laughs> title or yeah. for the welterweight title. Co-main event needs to be Nick Diaz. It almost like it Kazma doesn't matter. Shemaev. Yeah. That that's what a pay per view. That's the pay per view I need in my life. I need yeah. both Diaz brothers on a pay per view. One of them fighting for a belt, the other one coming back. Yeah, like the end of this year type of thing. I could totally see that. And or, I mean, or July, whatever. No, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, if you're Dana, I mean, you're sitting there thinking, like, man, what an easy way to sell a card. Both Diaz brothers on the same. I mean, you just, that's that's enough. It doesn't matter what else. Doesn't even matter who they're fighting. Just as long as they're both on the same card. Oh, and Dana knows that's what he does with Connor. Connor's cards almost always suck. Yeah, but they're like, what? We got Connor on it. No, people, exactly. And that's people what people are that's gonna what I've been buy thinking it. too. Like, Yep. Is that, oh wow. Which it's is like, smart. Yeah, which is smart. It's like, like put all he, the money into that one yeah. basket, you know, that one. And, and, you know, it works. I mean, they still, why do you need to put on all these other great fights when this one fight alone, this almost this one name alone is going to sell enough? And then you could save those other great fights to sell more at these, you know, at the other events. Yeah. Or you, or you just throw young people that people might not have heard of. Like, that's a good time for Up Sh- yeah. Shemaev, like. To show up and coming new talent, it's the best time to promote them. For yeah, sure, everyone's gonna be watching. Yep. you don't need like if Connor's fighting in the main event, you don't need another title fight in the yeah. main events. People are gonna buy it regardless. People aren't gonna be like, "Oh, wait, Amanda Nunez is on this too." All right, I'll buy it. Like, yeah, yeah. People are gonna see Connor and they're gonna buy it. Yeah, they exactly. don't care. 
Manonia is the greatest women's fighter of, of all time. And especially once you get to this outreach that isn't the normal pay-per-view buys, then you're targeting people that only know certain names. You know what I'm saying? That's where it's coming from. It's not, it's not you know, like once when you're getting all those extra pay-per-view buys, it's mostly from people who aren't as deep into MMA that just know it's, it's more for the hype or for the gimmick of getting together and partying over, you know, this big event. You know, it's the same thing I, I would say with, you know, even boxing too. Like whenever there's big boxing events, you know, most times it's not because so many people are into boxing. It's because, it, you know, it's it's a way to bring people together for like a party or something like that. Yeah, and it's it's Mayweather Pacquiao, Mayweather McGregor. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we got, we got, Tyson, we got Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua coming up. I don't know the date. Well, fuck, but now it's, it's, but it's goddamn up. Jake Paul. So you, exactly my point though, you know, it's like, it's for the... Don't don't put Jake Paul's name in the in the same category of what I just said. My bad. I didn't, All mean, right. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just, you know. We're unifying the heavyweight championship of the world, and you're then going to just segue that into Jake Paul. Are you fucking kidding me right <laughs> now, <dude? laughs> Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. That's going to be the best heavyweight boxing fight in a very long time. Yeah. Now, do you think any UFC heavyweights take on Tyson's? No. Just no. <laughs> I think even like like Francis Ngannou, sure he could knock him out, but if he went and boxed Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury's gonna beat the fuck out of him. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think that is? Just like evading him the first couple of rounds, tiring him out until he just starts picking him off, or what do you think is just gonna go like hell out the fucking gate and just show him like what's up? So, so like I mean, like power's power. Yeah. Like Deontay Wilder has one punch knockout power, yeah. and Tyson Fury fucking beat the shit out of like him. took years off of his life yeah in their last fight like yeah, yeah. and we'll see with anthony joshua has one punch knockout power he's a big dude he hits hard uh-huh. like I, I don't think like and f- i don't think francis ever will try to go box for the heavyweight championship of the world um but i think if he did i think tyson fury dominates him yeah but tyson fury's a heavyweight like we've never really seen before because he's bigger than everyone else but he's agile, he moves around, he doesn't get hit a bunch. You know, and obviously they're all lengthy, but holy fuck is that dude lengthy. Yeah. You know, and like, dude, the, the Deontay Wilder fight, it's, it was so great watching, like, in the bill, like, the pre that night. He's just sitting in the back, he's like just chilling, sitting on a couch, they're listening to music and his thing. Deontay Wilder's, like, training and doing shit. <laughs> Until, like, a half hour before the fight. Tyson Fury was just sitting on the couch with his wife <laughs> and then it's like, all right, I better put my gloves on. <laughs> and then went out there. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, you'd be thinking this fucking dude's injecting like horse shit into him. Fucking horse steroids. Some fucking cow steroid looking shit. But no, you know, he's probably just vibing on the couch with his family. Eating stromboli. Lots of stromboli. <laughs> Lots of stromboli. <laughs> now, but then, you know, back to UFC. Let's say, let's say Oliveira wins. Like what? Like I, I know earlier it's like, what, like I don't know what I want to see. Like who, who would be up for? You know, like who's gonna fight him next? So obviously, if Dustin beats Connor. He has to fight for the belt. Dustin's that just earned seems it. Such a Dustin, weird fight. But like it's it's the fight they have to make. No, because, for sure, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because Dustin absolutely deserves it. If Dustin loses to Connor. And Connor doesn't want to fight for the lightweight belt. He does his weird Connor stuff, like who the fuck's Charles Oliveira? Like, I'm everyone knows I'm the champion. Dustin and I, that was he'll be like Dustin and my fight was the real championship fight. Uh, and Connor's like, I want to go fight Masvidal or something like that. Then I think maybe you just throw Gaethje in there. Gaethje doesn't have to fight again. Yeah, he's coming off a loss to Khabib, but before that, he earned a title fight. Maybe you just throw him in there, and then you kind of reset it and see where everyone is. Mm. Now what what happens if Darush wins? I mean, I, I think he's right up there. I think I think him probably versus Justin Gaethje would think, probably be the next I fight. I think that would make sense. Yeah, I think that would I think that's probably Yeah, I think that would make sense and and um you know, whoever wins from them, I think then would go fight for the title. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um or him, like, see, it's tough matching him up. Like, he comes off a big win against Tony Ferguson. Like, I want to say, like, all right, because it sucks that it's Connor. That I mean, it doesn't suck. It's awesome that Connor and Poirier are fighting a third time. Yeah. I'm excited for that fight. But yeah. like, because Connor losing 
he's not like, all right, I'm, I'll fight Dariush and see which <laughs> one of us stays in the thing. Like, that's just never going to happen. Yeah, that's not. It, it, he's just, yeah, he's going to do the money fight. He, you know, he's he's fighting Poirier or he's fighting for a belt. Like, yeah. he, he's not. Yeah. He's not going to fall down the card and lightweight and be like, all right, let me try to work my way up. That's that's not the way he's going to do it. So I don't know what you do with Dariush. Uh, obviously, there's something. But see, now, this is a big thing that I think happens um, in the UFC that Dana White ends up finding, trying to find smooth ways to cover that ground. Because obviously, you know, no, I don't want to speak, you know, obviously for Dana White or the UFC or anything, but I would I would assume that he wants the more popular people, <laughs> the more favored fan, favorite, you know, fighters to become champions so that he is able to sell, you know, the, the events easier. And, you know... Uh, I don't want to say that he specifically doesn't want someone to become a champion, but from a business standpoint, I could see how he would, you know, probably only want Chandler or Connor or Dustin to probably, you know, to be the champion. Yeah, I mean, the best possible outcome for the UFC is Connor's Connor's champ champ. Like that's huge. Connor wins goes back down to forty five, wins that, wins fifty five, wins the BMF belt, like Connor being as high up in the sport as possible and sticking around is what's best for the UFC. Now, do you think any other UFC fighters go off and box again? And like maybe Connor even box again, or I don't know, any of them box who? Just say his yeah. name. I'm just not, say I'm his name. Say, I'm not saying his. I'm just saying in general because I actually so, I wasn't even fully talking about even Jake Paul because I mean something happens again where I don't know Connor overly proves his legitimacy as a striker again which you know not, not that he's not or anything like that but to the point to where they want to maybe even do a rematch between May, Mayweather and McGregor so that's the only like big boxing match I could see coming out of the UFC is like Connor yeah. against Mayweather or Connor against Pacquiao it would be Connor against a big name uh, I don't think any UFC fighter will box Jake Paul yeah because uh, your boy Chael Sonnen, uh, he <laughs> made a great point. He said, Dana watched the trailer thing and said, I don't want to be in business with these guys at all. Dana yeah. fucking hates Oscar De La Hoya. But yeah, he, because uh, <laughs> like with the Connor and Mayweather thing, yeah, like Dana was a part of the press conferences because Connor was under contract with the UFC. He's like, yeah. I'll let you do this, but the UFC is going to be prominent in it. Yeah. Which it, there's a fucking contract there. Dana has every right to do it. Dana White released Ben Ash. Ben Ashram was retired from MMA, but he was still under contract with him. He just released him and said, go do your thing. Well, did you see what he said about that, too? Go do your thing. He's not sure if the yeah, fight yeah. was legitimate. It might not have been, but who knows? Well, that's what I was saying right off the rip. You know, not that not that, that Ben didn't really get fucking knocked down right there. I mean, I totally believe it was a good strike and that he got fucking hit right on the temple and fucking dropped. Yeah, J- Jake Paul's a, he's a hard hitter. He's yeah, an he's athletic, a good explosive he's a good kid. Strike. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100%. 100%. But what I do think was a little weird, which we've talked about this, was um, the way that the the ref stopped the fight. I think that, you know, 100% Ben is going to get knocked the fuck out again, for sure. Especially if it just happened like that, and that's all legitimate, which I do believe. I just think that they should have let it go so again. For, for <laughs> those of you listening... Braden has a full erection right now talking about this because he thinks every fighter towards the end of their life should look like Muhammad Ali. They should just be shaken and not really talking. Hey, respect out to he Muhammad wants, Ali. He, yeah, shout out. Sh- <laughs> all respect. All respect, Muhammad Ali. Um, dude, like, like Askren, he got the shit knocked out of him. Then he stumbled into the ref when the ref said, dude, walk he got over it here. two or three seconds. Yeah, but yeah, then he stumbled. The, but then the ref like, said, walk over here. He, like, stumbled into him. Got, Dude, he, he, his legs were wobbling. I've he was seen, gonna he was gonna get hit again, and it was gonna be worse. Was it like, Saunders versus Canelo, fucking was wobbling. I would say be- worse than Askren was. I didn't watch that fight, but like at one point, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I just think you know, so. Dude, just, Ben Ben Askren got to smile and walk out of there with his wife and go have a nice night afterwards. Yeah, but I mean, he made the money. What they good paid for him. For. Yeah, but get no, the people but, what they paid for. So, you know? so people paid to either see Ben or Jake Paul get his ass kicked, or they're Jake Paul fans and they want to be like, see, he is a real boxer. Jake, Paul, so like, Jake let him Paul. get knocked down just like one more time. That's all I'm saying. So just did, get one more, one more knockdown, one more good clean boop, pop, beep. 
Uh, Boop. no, I'm glad because Ben Askren just went back. He's teaching his wrestling academy now. He gets to live his life as normal. Hey, so don't paint me so as the I, fucking bad guy. I care here, about man. the people that are fighting, and I want them to I, just I live long, too, happy, prosperous lives. I also care about the people lives. watching the fights. I want to see. A, I want to see a little something, something. We did. That was a cool. It was a cool. We got hurt shot. worse doing kid crashers at the age of ten. Than I don't want to say that. All sh- hey, respect to Ben Askren. I, you know, but. Ben know. Ben Ashcroft made a lot of money. Made a lot of money. No good for him. He was the he was the real winner that he's, night. He's 100%. living his life as normal. Um, and then Jake Paul <laughs> showing up and taking Floyd Mayweather. So you notice how we just talk about the Paul brothers now? Like this is what our podcast is turning into. Well, uh, week week, fucking... week two, turn in the hairs, talk about the Paul brothers again. Uh, last question. Last like question like this them. this this whole Floyd May like Floyd Mayweather's gonna beat the fuck out of Logan Paul. Hundred percent. And like if Jake Paul gets the next fight, so. Good for both of them, but what the fact, hey, did you the see what Mayweather that, said? The fact though? that they're with Floyd Mayweather right now, oh, I mean, holy shit, like, good for them. Yeah, but it was like Mayweather was saying too. It's like we, they're so famous that they're going to bring in so much money just because of their name that it makes sense, and I understand that. Yeah, but he was and saying Floyd, though, Floyd knows like he he's not going to get touched. Well, he's saying he said he, he said that I'll fight both of the brothers in the same night. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that, but that's amazing. Yeah, he he said that, and um, you know, I, I doubt they're gonna do it. I mean, I heard that. I guess Jake Paul was uh, is not allowed uh, to go to the event, but I well, mean, he's he's not allowed at the event. I, that, yeah, that's what I guess Logan Paul said. I I don't know. I saw this little clip of them talking on the phone, and Logan's like, "You're not allowed to come now. You're kicked out." He's like, "I don't give a fuck." It's so this funny. is turning into like WWE shit. Like, Dude, this is like <laughs> Stone Stone Cold's been kicked out of the building, and then Jake Paul's gonna ride in on a Zamboni and storm Ooh. the ring. Oh, dude, a hundred percent. I mean, they literally had. I don't know when. I just saw a clip of it as well because everything's just fucking clips these days. Um, of Logan Paul getting fucking stunnered. Like someone totally stole like oh, that was, that was Stone Cold's fucking move for some shit. We gotta start doing these reaction videos for WWE or whatever the fucking. So it was it was Kevin Owens. And I believe he got Stone Cold's approval before he did it. I mean, I don't, I don't know fuck. for sure, but I believe Stone Cold. I, w- I would assume he'd have to. But even if he gave him the rights, dude, like, come on, bro. Like, I, I get it. It's probably hard to come up with your own fucking move. There's been, like, hundreds of fucking wrestlers. How many moves can you do? But that that is, like, an overly iconic move to the point to where it's, like, you know exactly who it's associated with. I yeah, don't know. And, don't. Now, and now this guy gets some of that gets some of that rub. I would do that in a <laughs> second. Are you kidding me? Well, the first thing that jumps into my mind, and I'm I, I don't even fucking keep up with the shit anymore, is who the fuck stole f- Stone Cold's fucking move? I got I got upset immediately. <laughs> I said I said fuck this whole gimmick. I don't give a fuck about Logan Paul. I don't give a fuck about whatever's happening here. The only thing I give a fuck about is Stone Cold's fucking move being stolen by this fucking stealing little motherfucking thief. Yeah, and like that's great. <laughs> WWE, like they, they don't care what the reaction is as long as they're getting a reaction. They're doing their job. Randy Orton, do you remember? I'm a right after Eddie player. Guerrero died, immediately after he was in the ring with Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio was like looking up. And he said, "You're looking up in heaven, like you're talking to Eddie." Well, Eddie's in hell, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that is a company that just doesn't give a fuck, dude. They're just like, let's do the craziest, worst things we can possibly do. Get a reaction. I mean, dude. And they've been around forever. The guy who fucking owns the fucking company had his son drop from the fucking... How high was that? Like uh, 200 fucking feet? No. 200, how far 200 feet is? It's yeah, so big. Yeah, it's like big. a skyscraper. But this so dude was big. at the top of the stadium. This man, I mean, it had to be at least 100 feet it fucking was, high. It was probably like. At least 100 feet. This man, no. bro, this thing had to be. No. At, oh, oh my it's God. all camera angles, dude. No, no, no. This it's <laughs> all camera <laughs> angles. It was probably 30 feet. No, no, no. no yes. No, 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 no. I yes. was I was at thirty feet on a little fucking boulder. No, dude, a couple they, weeks ago, this thing was. Dude, it's all camera angles. They can tell you the Undertaker's like seven foot two. You look at him; he's like six eight. He fell for so fucking long. His fucking arms did ten full fucking circles, just fucking trying to create his own gravity. That's how fucking the man was falling for so long. That what's his name? Bruce? Bu- no, not not Bruce Buffer. Fucking not Bruce Buffer. <laughs> no. JR? Yeah, JR <laughs> gave a whole goddamn segment on what it means to be a McMahon as this dude was falling. I'm going to fucking look it up because 
This dude fell for like, dude a hundred feet is that's a lot of feet, dude. That's like fifty feet. But Didn't then he almost get paralyzed? It. No, he uh he survived the helicopter crash. Did you know that? That's oh, McMahon's yeah. kid. Okay, okay. Did you know about that helicopter thing? No way. Yeah, it's wild. Really? Yeah. What are you on right now that you you're pulling this up? YouTube. Okay. Shout out to YouTube. The tube with the U in the in the tube. This is this is great podcast, and you guys can't see it, but he's he's pulling up a video. Uh yeah. There's a video. There's Shane McMahon. He's he's about like twenty feet up. That's not even the video, but the, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's like he's, 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 he's like that dude's <laughs> up third. That okay. That's got to be at least forty feet, and that's not even the video I'm fucking talking about. Yeah, that's bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the camera angle. The camera angle's like down underground. Big Show was just at the bottom of that. Big Show is how fucking tall? Seven fucking feet? You could have stacked eight fucking Big Shows on top of each. Maybe not eight. Probably like six Big Shows for where All right, so Shane McMahon so just... 42 feet? Yeah, but this... <laughs> that's, that's not... See, like, like, that's not crazy. Like No, no, but there's, a, there's definitely a worse one where he was at the top. Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, oh it's Owen Hart. Oh, Owen oh. Hart, no. He fucking died. Oh, yeah. That, oh, my <laughs> he was, bad. He was ziplining down the ring and the thing broke. Oh, yeah. No, no. It was so Shane McMahon. But, dude, that was what? Dude. But it's about the same distance. Like, he fell from the literal ceiling. Like, the. Dude, you got to watch. You know, that's we're going to do a reaction. We're going to watch Dark Side of the Ring on Owen Hart dying. And then we're going to talk about it after. It's, it's fucked up the way WWE handled that. Yeah. They're a terrible company. They're horrible people that run that. I bet, especially after you were telling me how every fucking week these people got to drive from fucking one side of the nation to the other. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> to so fucking now, so COVID, <laughs> it's the best thing that happened to, to fucking those guys. F1 bomb Brock Lesnar off their, or fucking Big Show off their shoulders. I mean, Jesus when, Christ. And to, and to jump off of like 20 foot objects <laughs> have people at home think it's 100 feet. <laughs> Can you imagine being Rey Mysterio? It'll be like, oh man, I got to do another triple backflip off a fucking ladder next week. I couldn't imagine doing a single backflip off the ladder. <laughs> that is that is too many. He, he flips. already knows his hips are dislocated from fucking <laughs> last week. Just like, man, I gotta make it up this fucking ladder and do it again. Uh, all right, dude. So, no, it's been like an hour. Yeah, it's been like an hour. So, real quick before we go. So, and, and everyone's like, oh, why aren't they talking about the full UFC card? Uh, we're not fucking fight experts. Yeah, what do I look like? I, I don't think you want to hear me talk about like Chuki Chuk again. Like that fight, like I, I can just give you a prediction, but I, it would not be intelligent. Go listen to Daniel Cormier. Yeah, Joe Rogan's, you know, he's got fucking fight podcasts all the time. Yeah, go listen to someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, but if so you, just, you real, know. real quick, I got I got Tony Ferguson, unanimous decision. Okay. I got Michael Chandler, third round, TKO. What's what you got? It's pretty good. I, I, I got Tony um, either winning... In the first two rounds, or Dairush ends up uh, winning on one of the later rounds. I don't think it goes to an unanimous decision. Hey guys, it's me, Braden. I'm gonna I'm just gonna play both sides on this fight and not make a prediction. All right, I I'm think just, Tony, I'm just gonna say like I think one of the guys is gonna win. I think Tony's, it won't be a draw. Think, okay, well I think Tony's gonna win. I, I just think it could go like either way, but I, I think if Tony I'm does, sure every fight could well, go either way. A hundred percent. But like what I mean more so is kind of just like on the. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. Eh. All right, so I think Tony wins, and if he does win, I think it's within the first couple rounds. And then I think, once again, almost the same exact thing for Chandler. I think Chandler's going to win, but I think it's going to be within the first two rounds. Um, and if and if for some reason Oliveira wins, I, I think it's in the later rounds uh, by submission. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, you want to give like a, just a full-on prediction for both fights? Yeah, so Tony Ferguson wins uh, first two rounds... Uh, by TKO and Chandler wins by TKO first two rounds. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. This is the first five K five, six Kings podcast in the books. We'll do one beginning of next week. We'll talk about, you know, we post fights. Talk about that. We'll probably talk about more things that Vince McMahon's son will jump off of. Um, and I didn't say this during the ad read, but you know, try going to try going to subway and just tell them the five, six Kings sent you. I don't, I don't imagine you'll get anything out of it, but it's like you're not going to get thrown out of Subway for saying those words. So, you know, 
go there, tell them the five six kings told you that you could buy one foot long and get a foot long at equal or lesser value for fifty percent off. Subway, eat fresh. Braden, you got anything before we sign off? Um <clears throat> Nope. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace out. <laughs>